February 21st. So today, my English teacher, Mrs. White, presented me with my prize for winning the spelling bee, a dictionary, which is sort of an odd prize for being the best speller. You'd think they would give the dictionary to the class's worst speller. She also let me in on the downside of winning the school's spelling bee. Now I have to compete in the regional spelling bee, which means I'm going to have to get up early next Thursday and be driven over to the Civic Center to compete against other schools' spelling bee winners. She gave me a folder with a list of words to study, but I figured that I'll be okay. I'm a pretty good speller. February 22nd. Uh-oh. Today, our school's principal, Dr. Evans, came up to me in the lunchroom and said, Here's our big speller. Are you R-E-A-D-Y for the competition? And then she laughed at her own joke, and then she said, very seriously, You're preparing for the spelling bee, though, right? You're studying the words? Because ours is the only middle school in the region that's never won one. And I said, Yep. And she said, Okay, good. Because all the other principals have at least one spelling bee trophy. All of them. All of them but me. And she seemed to be about to cry. So I told her I was studying as hard as I could. And she said, Excellent! I am counting on you. I mean, the school's counting on you. Anyway, when I got home, I opened up the folder and looked over the list of spelling B words. The list had words on it like ganglionitis, zonon, missable, and dolor meter. I had to look up what all of them mean. But dolor meter, it turns out, is an instrument that measures pain and suffering. I think that right now I would score very high on a dolor meter. February 24th. Ugh, I've just spent the last three hours making flashcards for all the spelling bee words. I'm trying to remember the words by putting them into sentences, but it's not easy. A lot of my sentences are things like, Tad really hoped that polydactyl, or dactyl, excuse me, won't be part of the spelling bee. February 26th. Today, after English class, Mrs. White pulled me aside and said, Dr. Evans asked me to check with you and make sure you're studying all the spelling bee words. I told her that I was, and she looked really relieved. She said, She's been talking about the spelling bee a lot, you know. A lot. February 27th. Tonight's the last night before the spelling bee. So I spent another night studying the words until I fell asleep on top of a pile of flashcards. Then I dreamed that I was at the spelling bee and all my competitors were gigantic bees who could spell or who could spell. It was terrifying. February 28th. The spelling bee went calamitously, ruinously, grievously. All of which, by the way, are words I can spell. What I couldn't spell, it turned out, was the very first word I was asked, which was janitor. I guess I was just really nervous, but as soon as I got the word, I stood up there behind the microphone, staring out at my parents and my sister and Dr. Evans in the audience, and very confidently said, G. And then I tried to pretend that I'd said it like G and said J. But the judges hit the bell that meant I was out, and I had to leave the stage. I was the very first contestant to lose. My parents were really nice about it. They hugged me and said they were all proud of me. Anyway. And Dr. Evans said, Yes, Tad, we're all very proud of you. And it was hard not to notice that she was saying it through clenched teeth 
and that she was had the spelling bee program crumpled into a tiny ball, clutched in her fist. As we left for the parking lot, one of the principals of another school came up to Dr. Evans and said, Well, you gave it your best shot, Gannett. Which was weird, because Dr. Evans' first name is Janet. Oh, I just got that. Man, principals can be mean.